welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about factoring difference and sum of perfect cubes. In previous videos, we've talked about difference of perfect squares. This is going to be somewhat similar, only now we're talking about perfect cubes, and it's a little bit of a different process. When we talk about difference of perfect squares, remember it always has to be a difference. We always have to be subtracting in order for difference of perfect squares to work, hence the name difference. But for difference and sum of perfect cubes, it actually doesn't matter whether we're adding or subtracting, we can factor it either way. So the first thing I want to point out is this acronym here, SOAP. So SOAP is just an easy way to help us remember how to do the signs as we go along. So S stands for same sign, okay, whether it's negative or positive. O stands for opposite sign. A, P kind of goes together, it's always positive sign. So this last one will always be positive, which kind of brings us into this. So this is gonna be our factored form for a difference or sum of a perfect cube. The first thing we wanna think about is to find the cubed root, and I'm gonna note that on here cube root both terms. What is the cubed root of x cubed? Well, it's actually just x. And the way I'm going to write this is I'm going to do x and then in parentheses I'm going to show the cube. So I'm kind of separating the x from the cube a little bit. Now let's do the cubed root of 64. Now you may or may not know that, but if you've got a graphing calculator, it'll do it for you. You just hit math and then you see that fourth option is cubed root. So you just hit number four and there's your cubed root. So you can do cubed root of 64 and it'll tell you it's four. So we know four cubed is 64. So we're just kind of isolating these values and we know if we cube them, we'll get this. So now this X is gonna be our A. Now notice it's not X cubed, just the x is going to be our a value and just the 4 is going to be our b value. So now I'm going to rewrite this just to help us line it up really well. We're now going to rewrite this and we're going to be inserting our a value and our b value for A and B, and we're also going to determine what signs go in each place. So right here we're going to do our parentheses, but instead of A, we're going to put what A is, X. Now remember our S here for our sign stands for same sign. So what was our sign here? It was positive, so we're going to keep it positive. Next will be our B value, which we said was 4. And we'll close that parentheses and we'll start a new one. Our next one says a squared. Remember, a is x, so we'll write x squared. Now for this sign, it says o. Remember, o is opposite sign. So originally we had positive, now we're gonna have negative. The next part says a times b, so x times four. But we wouldn't write that x four, right? Math etiquette says we let the coefficient go first, so it's four times x. It's okay to flip the order there. This last sign is AP, always positive, and then B squared, and our B, remember, is 4, so we've got 4 squared. Now our final step is to actually simplify anything we can. So notice like this 4 squared here, what is 4 squared? Well that's 4 times 4, which is 16. So we want to actually rewrite this completely simplified. So x plus 4, nothing changes there. x squared minus 4x, nothing to change there. But this plus 4 squared, we're going to change that to plus 16. And now we've factored our sum of perfect cubes into a factored form. Let's try another one. So for this one, remember our first step is the same. We're going to cube root both terms. The cubed root of 125, let's see what that would be. So you just go to math, 4, and we'll type in 125. So our cubed root of 125 is 5. Our cubed root of x cubed is just x. So if we cube 
5x, we will end up with 125x cubed. We'll bring our minus down and our cubed root of 27. So let's try that. Cubed root of 27. And we get 3. So 3 cubed would give us 27. So now what's in the parentheses is our a here, 5x, and our parentheses there, 3, is our b. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this here because it just helps us line it up. And now let's go ahead and insert our a and b values and figure out our signs. Parentheses, a is 5x. Now remember, this is our S. So that was our S, our O, and then our AP. S stands for same sign, so we're still gonna have subtraction. B is three. We'll close that parenthesis. A, 5x squared. Now this is really important. It's the whole a squared, meaning it's not just 5x squared, right? If you just write 5x squared, you're only squaring the x, whereas we need to square the 5 and the x. So here's how we're going to write that. 5 squared times x squared. I know that feels a little weird, but we've got to square both of those values that make up the a value. Our O stands for opposite sign, so it was minus, now it's going to be positive. A times B, so that'll be 5x times 3. We can write that like this, 5x times 3. Always positive sign. And then B squared, so 3 squared. And now we just want to clean it up. 5x minus 3, nothing to update there, nothing to simplify there. Now right here, what is 5 squared? So 5 squared is 5 times 5, which is 25. x squared, which is bring down. Now plus 5x times 3 is 15x plus 3 squared is 9. So there we have our factored form for our difference of perfect cubes. For this last example, I would go ahead and write cubed root both terms, but I'm going to show you something that happens here. If we pull out our calculator and I try to go ahead and find the cubed root of 32, let's do that. So let's hit math 4 and cubed root of 32. Notice I get a really long decimal. What that tells me is, 32 is not a perfect cube. And we could even try the same thing with 4. Now, it doesn't matter whether 4 is or is not at this point because 32 isn't. But let's just try just to see what happens. So if I did cubed root of 4, I also get a long decimal. So 4 is not a perfect cube either. So what I would want to do at this point is say, do I have a GCF? So when looking for a GCF, we say, what is the greatest factor that goes into 32 and goes into 4 evenly? And hopefully you're thinking 4, because 4 is our GCF. Now, if you weren't sure it was 4, I'm going to show you a really quick calculator trick. If you go to math, you go over to number, and you go down to number 9. Notice that pulls up GCD. You put in the two values you're looking at, 32 comma 4, and you hit enter and it'll tell you the GCF. So GCD and GCF are the same thing. So your GCF is four. So if you didn't know that, that's an easy way. Uh, keep in mind, it only works if you've got two numbers. If you're trying to do three or more, it's gonna give you an error. So just a cool trick. Okay, so we know we need to factor out a GCF of four. So 32 divided by four, that's gonna give me eight x cubed, and negative 4 divided by 4, that's going to give me a negative 1. So now that 4 is going to be really important. We do need to make sure we include it in our final answer. So I like to always do like a little arrow down so I won't forget about 4. For now though, we're going to ignore that 4, and we're now going to cube root both terms. 
So the cube root of 8, if I bring out my calculator, so cubed root of 8, now I've got a perfect cube, it's 2. And the cubed root of x cubed is just x. So 2x cubed would give me 8x cubed. Bring my sign down. And the cubed root of 1 is actually just going to be 1, but I can show you. Cubed root of 1 is just 1, so we'll have our 1 cubed. And now from here, this is our A, and this is our B. I'm going to go ahead and bring down our formula just to kind of help us with setup. And now let's fill in our A and B and figure out our signs. So our parentheses. We can go and put that 4 there if we want, just so we won't forget it. So parenthesis A, so A is 2x. Now remember, same sign, S, so we had a negative, so we'll bring down a negative. B, which is a 1. Next parenthesis, A squared. So remember, just like we had the situation here, we have to be very careful. It's the full term of A. So it's 2 squared and x squared. We've got to square them both. Opposite sign, so we did have minus, now we're going to have plus. a times b, so that's 2x times 1. Always positive, b squared, so that's just 1 squared. So now we're ready to write our final answer. So we've got that 4, that was the GCF, just kind of tags along. 2x minus 1. Now 2 squared is 4, 2 times 2. x squared is just x squared. Plus 2x times 1 is 2x. And 1 times 1 is just 1. So there is our factored form for our difference of perfect cubes. Here's one for you guys to try. I will post the answer in the video description below. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.